Hi, in this video we will look at how the work of the scientists John Dalton, Johann Wolfgang Doberina, John Newlands and Dmitry Mendeleev led to the development of a periodic table of elements. The periodic table is an indispensable tool for any chemist. This iconic table with its rows and column of elements represents centuries of scientific inquiry, discovery and innovation. Scientists over many hundreds of years had studied the reactions of the elements and had tried to find patterns and trends in the properties of these elements. They had come up with their own ideas and theories on how the elements should be arranged in a periodic table. However, in this video, we will focus on the work of just four scientists, John Dalton, Johann Wolfgang Doberina, John Newlands and Dmitry Mendeleev. It is important that you try to put yourself in the position of these early scientists and visualise the information and technology that was available to them at the time. New elements were being discovered all the time. They had limited information about these elements, some of which was correct and some of it, unfortunately, was incorrect. And of course, they knew nothing about protons, neutrons or electrons or our ideas about the structure of atoms. Some of the elements that were put in the early periodic tables were in fact compounds and lots of elements still had not yet been discovered. So it was no wonder it was proven difficult to find any sense or pattern in how these elements react or how they might be grouped together in a periodic table. They had to piece all this new information together and to try to find common patterns in how the elements reacted. And like many new ideas, they did not always get it right the first time. They used the information they had available at the time to build the best models they could. And like most scientific ideas, as evidence and information became available, their ideas changed. Let's start by looking at some of the ideas of the scientist John Dalton. Now Dalton proposed his atomic theory in 1803, which suggested that all matter is made up of atoms. He also believed that atoms of the same element were identical to each other and that they were different from atoms of other elements. Dalton also suggested that different atoms or elements can combine to form compounds. Now Dalton also assigned relative atomic weights to known elements and this allowed for a quantitative comparison between the elements and helped him lay the groundwork for identifying periodic patterns and trends within the elements. Dalton also created tables of elements and listed these elements according to their atomic weights, paving the way for future developments of a periodic table of elements. So while his work did not directly lead to the organisation of a periodic table, his ideas laid the groundwork for later developments in atomic theory, which were crucial for understanding the periodicity of elements that is, the reoccurrence of similar properties within the elements. Johann Wolfgang Doberiner was a scientist who noticed patterns among groups of elements. He observed that certain groups of three elements, which he termed triads, had similar chemical properties. For example, one of Doberiner's triads contained the three elements chlorine, bromine and iodine, which today we now know are three of the halogens in group 7 of the periodic table. While, for example, another one of Doberiner's triads contained the three elements calcium, strontium and barium, which are all found in group 2, that is, the alkaline earth metals in the modern periodic table. Now, one of Doberiner's most notice noticeable contributions was the discovery of the law of triads where the atomic weight of the middle element in a triad was roughly the average of the atomic weights of the other two elements. For example, in the triad, which contains chlorine, bromine and iodine, Doberiner noticed that the atomic weight of bromine is approximately the average of chlorine and iodine. While in the triad containing calcium, strontium and barium, the atomic weight of the middle element strontium is approximately the average of the masses of calcium and barium. 
So while Doberan is triads were treated as a curiosity, they actually hinted at a pattern in the way the elements should be grouped together. That is, they hinted at a periodicity in the properties of the elements and this later inspired scientists to explore similar patterns. John Newlands was a British chemist who made a significant contribution to the development of an early periodic table. Perhaps his most noticeable achievement was his proposal of his Law of Octaves. In his Law of Octaves, Newlands observed that when elements were arranged in order of increasing atomic weight, every eighth element displayed similar properties to the first, much like an octave in music. Now a simplified version of Newlands' periodic table is shown on screen. Newlands attempted to organise the known elements into groups based on their properties and atomic weights, and in fact, he arranged the elements into rows of seven, with elements exhibiting similar chemical properties placed underneath, underneath each other, much like we do in the modern periodic table. However, Newland's law of octaves was met with some scepticism and ridicule from the scientific community at the time. The main reasons for this were, it really only accurately predicted the properties up to the element calcium. Beyond this, it started to break down. For example, Newlands placed some elements in the same octave, despite the fact that they did, that they did not share similar chemical properties. For example, he placed iron, a metal, in the same octave as oxygen and sulphur. Newlands probably assumed at the time that all the elements had been discovered since he left no gaps in his periodic table, which was rather unfortunate since new elements were being found fairly regularly and his periodic table could not be used to predict the properties of these newly discovered elements. Newlands also crammed more than one element into some of the boxes in his periodic table simply to make them fit his law of octaves and ignoring their individual chemical properties, which were often different. In 1869, Dmitry Mendeleev, a Russian chemist, unveiled his new periodic table, which, like Newland's periodic table, arranged the elements according to their atomic weights and chemical properties. However, Mendeleev was not always strict about arranging the elements by their atomic weights, and he was not afraid to move the position of an element in his periodic table. For example, based on their atomic weights, iodine should have been placed before the element tellurium. However, Mendeleev observed that iodine shared similar chemical properties with the elements fluorine, chlorine and bromine, while tellurium resembled sulphur and selenium. He therefore swapped their positions in the periodic table so that elements with similar chemical properties were placed underneath each other. But perhaps one of Mendeleev's key insights was his willingness to leave gaps in his periodic table for elements which he believed had not yet been discovered. But not only did he leave gaps for these undiscovered elements, he made predictions about the properties of these missing elements based on the patterns he observed in his periodic table. For example, Mendeleev predicted the properties and atomic weight of an element he called eka silicon which would fill the gap underneath silicon in his periodic table. And when germanium was discovered in 1886, its properties matched those predicted by Mendeleev remarkably well. Mendeleev also predicted the existence of an element he called eka aluminium which would fill the gap underneath aluminium in his periodic table. And when gallium was discovered and its properties closely matched Mendeleev's predictions, it was obvious that Mendeleev was on the right track with his periodic table. Hi, thanks for watching. If you find this video helpful or would simply like more information, then why not visit the website that accompanies these videos? The links are in the description below. If you enjoyed the video, then please consider liking and subscribing. Thank you.